What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the non-fungible show here on the 3T Warrior Academy. And I am very excited, guys, because we have a special guest and a very, very important topic. You know, last year it was crazy for NFTs. And it was crazy for play to earn games. And a lot of people made money, had a lot of fun, but kind of feels like it's game over. So what's the deal? What's going to happen next? Gaming plus blockchain. Is it really suitable or is it, you know, far away from mass adoption? We want to talk about the challenges and all of that. We got a special guest here, Daniel from Equilibrium Games. And um, super excited. We got some great topics and we want to have his thoughts. If you guys have any interesting questions, this is the time to ask. Leave them in the chat and smash the like button. So everybody knows Jackie. Everybody knows Bellino and Dad Clock. So I'm not even going to ask them how they're feeling. They're always great. We are here high vibration, high frequency. So and sending love to Tones. He uh, couldn't be with us today. I really want to kick it over to Daniel. Daniel, how you doing? Welcome on the show. And uh, what's up, my man? Hi, great to be here on the show. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And uh, yeah, Daniel, we're going to ask you, like, it, you're going to sweat. We're going to ask you a lot of <laughs> questions. And uh, it's an interesting topic. And, you know, the market is a little pumping again. People are, like, looking for good opportunities to enter again, whether you like it or not, you know the developers they don't care about the market they are building in the background the real projects are building in the background and i know that you guys are building and we want to know what's going on with equilibrium games so daniel what is equilibrium who are you guys let's start <laughs> okay. with that okay um we started as a game development company um we are game uh, development company building on the xrpl um we currently employ around 11 people for local and uh, seven, <laughs> seven uh, external. Um, um, and we um, building RPG games mostly for us. And besides that, we are starting also to be a gaming hub on the XRPL. We um, combine different um, play to earn games, NFT games under Equilibrium. Um, this gives many benefits for those projects, which I come later to. And um, we are also building a, like a marketplace for Equilibrium for all the games on the uh, Equilibrium ecosystem and also other NFT projects. So, um, that clocks. I know you're a big fan of play to earn. No, I'm kidding. And it's just all new for us, right? We're you know we don't have gamers here on board. Of course, Tones is our gamer. Um, but Tones I want to know, that Clocks, if you want to start off by asking something that you always got in your head the last months about gaming, this is your chance to ask them, man. <laughs> no, I think I've said this before. Uh, I'm a huge gamer. I love the game. Uh, I have a, a strong history of gaming, and I have not been a gamer for several years now. And uh, I'm just kind of waiting in the background, all these kind of play to earn games and all these, these, the, a new wave of, of gaming's coming. And uh, I already sift through uh, the crypto markets and the NFT markets enough. I can also sift through all the, the new games being developed. I'm kind of waiting for, for people like Daniel here and people like Tones to come and say, hey, this is the one so that I can, uh, I can check it out and, and know life it and, and, uh, you know, I can't play anything casually, right? So if I play something, I have to go all in and just no life it. Uh, people know what I'm talking about. Uh, we got JVR in the comments here. Me and him had a conversation about this not that long ago uh, about a, a really old uh, game, World of Warcraft, that me and him both used to play a long time ago. You know, so I'm just kind of waiting. I'm letting it all settle out. I don't have time to dive into all of them and figure out which ones are going to be awesome and which ones aren't going to be awesome. I'm waiting for these smarter guys to tell me so I can uh, so I can check it out and be a gamer again. So, Daniel, um, I actually want to know, like, Equilibrium Games is not just a game, but you guys are trying to build your own ecosystem and have uh, or develop multiple different games. <laughs> so can you also elaborate a little bit on, like, um, what does that mean? Are you guys developing these games for other people? Are you offering that service or is it still going to be your own games? But like, you know, you're a big 
game hoster um, or game host and you have different games um, like under your brand? Yeah, so Equilibrium Games, we're just developing our two own games, which is Blight Thrust and World of Equilibrium. Um, all those other games, they're their own team, their own dev team, they're their own projects. Um, it all started with our first partner, Hodelman. Um, the developer, his name is Michael. Uh, he contacted us and was like, hey, I don't want to create my own token. I don't want to list that token on exchanges. It costs too much money. Um, can we somehow combine it? And with that, it started. And from uh, there, we got now over uh, eight partners with 10 total games in de development um, that are all are going to use Equilibrium Games, uh, our Equilibrium token. And um, yeah, they are developing their own games. Um, we don't offer that service because we have enough to do with our two games. Um, However, we got contacted by many NFT projects if we can develop the game for them, but we have to decline, of course. And um, now we have uh, like 10 games that range from RPG games, strategy games, shooter games, um, like adventure games. We have like a, like the first partner, Hodelman, is like a Pokemon style game that is already in alpha, is playable. Um, Another one is like uh, Dragon Knights is in beta. It's like a pixelated adventure game, you can say. Um, we have Xscape, which is developing a metaverse kind of uh, MMO style uh, game. We have um, Happy Cats that are developing like a, also MMO. Our own two games, Blights for Us, which is like a RPG, uh, RPG style game. Uh, like a mix between Diablo 2, uh, Dark Souls, and Path of Exile. And then we have World of Agreement, which is more like an MMO, like a World of, uh, World of Warcraft style game. And uh, we have the shooter, for example, Alpha Strike is a new partner that just contacted us recently. Uh, they were playing like a shooter game, Counter Strike style, Warzone style. And yeah, many that I forget right now. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, Bellino, I know that you are a gamer. So I actually want to know, um, because I also saw in the comments that, you know, people want to know, like, before every, anyone says, like, uh, what their favorite, you know, games are, like, what actually are they playing, right? This is also important. If you're playing mobile games, then obviously, talk, you know, thinking of, like, oh, this guy is going to uh, develop a World of Warcraft game or something like that, or a very... A far cry kind of graphics game you know is maybe you know far ahead so i want to know what is your uh favorite game i want to know your thoughts and then you know get a little bit of deck clocks jackie and then then you like i have a great question for you so get ready so bolino so for thoughts, me personally man? there is not that game it's always about what kind of person you are why you are playing are you playing just for like entertainment purpose or are you playing for like trying to be competitive, trying to play like on tournaments or stuff like that. So there's like this competitive scene is getting huge since like the internet is getting more affordable. Uh, PCs are getting more cheaper. So for example, games like League of Legends, Dota and, and uh, Starcraft and stuff like that. So people stop only playing it for fun at some point they started to play it because of like trying to see it more like a sports esports trying to be like competitive and then it's it stopped being about like having high end graphics triple a graphics it started to be more about uh, uh, about the game mechanics about the balancing stuff about the performance stuff so uh, for me personally my biggest concern regarding to nft gaming is right now everyone is thinking kind of about these yeah we can just turn skins into nfts and then you can sell them some to, to someone else but i don't think that will be enough to like conquer the whole space with nfts and actually be worth for companies to jump on on the blockchain so my question to you would be if you have uh, if we have time right now before clocks you could maybe answer 
So what is the use case of NFTs for gaming besides tokenizing uh, cosmetics in game? So because that's the like the main focus everyone held, but there's kind of no different concept than besides uh, tokenizing an item in game. Yeah, I mean, you can use NFTs for different stuff in games. You can provide passive income, uh, cosmetic uh, items, like you said. You can make totally like their own character for them. Um, besides that, the main uh, aspect of NFTs, what I think can bring it, is the royalty in NFTs. For example, if the creator of a game development studio, Activision, for example, creates an NFT, and this NFT allows, uh, well, we bring something in the game. Maybe it's like a skin for the M4 in Warzone. Okay, um, the main benefit that it can bring is the royalty. For example, you have an NFT in your, like the cosmetic item in your inventory and you can trade it on the open market. Doesn't matter where you trade it, doesn't need to be like uh, on Steam, can be on Epic Games, can be on an external marketplace. Every time when this gets traded, the uh, creator, Activision, gets money back. And like normally, this is like normally you have like Steam and it's like a closed marketplace. You can't take it out. It's in Steam. Uh, Steam takes the cut, of course, but you can't take it out. Uh, you have um, black markets that you can trade uh, CSGO skins. You can get banned and then lose those items. Yes, exactly. And with this, it uh, makes it um, kind of like a public uh, opportunity. The creators of the game get the cut. Um, if there's a marketplace like Steam, they can still take the cut, but the creator gets the cut without any fees directly for every transaction there is. And I think this is the main benefit of NFTs. Besides, of course, like uh, cosmetic items, like in-game shops, that, that, that exists since, since the beginning of games, almost. That is, that is not something revolu revo revolutionary. <laughs> Sorry, English is not my first language. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this the royalty that you can when you create something, this is what's make it uh, make it new, and also um, that you can like for example in games like Dota you have like a big modding community that creates items, and even the like normally those modding items they don't make any profit they make don't make profit for the gaming company, but for example with Dota 2 they integrate those ones and they give the the creator of those modded uh, cosmetic items like a, a fair cut. You can automatic uh, make this all automatically uh, with NFTs. So you get money for the creator of the uh, of the game and for the designers of those items. Fantastic. I see here in the comments we have Mr. Wright. He's asked what each of the panel's favorite games are. Uh, Mr. Wright, I have a question for you. Is that your real name? Because my last name is Wright, so I'm Mr. Wright. So you can answer that in the comments while we answer your question. I'm going to kick it over to Jackie. She can tell us what her favorite game is first. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I was probably not the best person to start with, but maybe I am because people will have better games than I. Um, I'm not a huge gamer, guys. I... I I uh, grew up with, <laughs> I grew up playing a lot of sports, but I did kind of dabble with the Xbox and the um, the GameCube, things like that, the Game Boy. Um, my favorite game right now, um, I'm playing some kind of, not necessarily play to earn, but I'm doing some move to earn games. Um, and there's, there's a lot of things coming out with actual like integrating um, reality, uh, things that we do on a daily basis and using that data and bringing it into play to earn. So there's a lot of games coming out that are like move to earn for walking, running, things like that. But there's also like a sleep by, uh, play to earn, um, where you, you know, they, they track your sleeping schedules and you get paid off of things like that. I, you know, I don't know right now how all of those token, I see you're laughing, Daniel. So I don't know how all of those things are, are coming into play. And I know behind the stream, we were talking a little bit about those are kind of Ponzi schemes. I don't see how those can be sustainable and not be a Ponzi scheme, honestly. Um, so I, I do kind of, I, 
I, my hat is off to what you guys are doing at Equilibrium. I was looking at your website. Um, you have a lot of different games going on, um, and then one actually coming out on XRPL. I did have a question, though, about your tokenomics. Are all of those games that people play, do they all earn the token EQ? And then that token is then um, utilized to buy things within the marketplace that you are coming out with, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, all our games partners, they use, uh, if they have their own token, they can uh, provide uh, equilibrium and their own token as a reward, but also they will provide, yeah, they will provide equilibrium as a uh, reward for playing the game. And you can use equilibrium and XRP on our marketplace to buy um, those in-game items. Okay, so it can be, oh, sorry, just a follow-up question. It, it's used, so that that's earned both on XRPL, and then is the, the other games that you guys have, what, um, are those on a blockchain currently? Are those? Um, yes, they are on, they are all XRP uh, projects so far. Um, oh. Of course, since um, XLS20 is not live yet, um, most of them just have a token, or if they don't have a token, they don't have anything, but theoretically, they're XRP games, yes. Awesome. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, and I wanted to bring them up. So these are the projects you guys are working on, right? Yes, they're our partners. Mm, cool. Cool. And um, cool. I actually, guys, want to say this. You guys are killing it in the chat. And uh, thank you guys so, so much for that, for, for the amazing uh, contribution here. And please, let's, at, let's ask him questions and let's make Daniel sweat. And <laughs> I want to ask you this, Daniel. In the Behind you, I see someone also working. Is it also yeah. like, do I see like a 3D model being you know, I, um, developed there? Yeah, this I is actually... our uh, local designer, Chui. Nice. Um, so you guys are in the, uh, like, at the yeah. office right now nice yeah cool. on the other side you don't see it we have two developers you want to say hello hey this is an insight guys hey what's up <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry oh nice. so it's a team guys so th this is nice okay, yeah this um, is our local team nice, we still nice. work with um two people from germany two developers we have one from the uk another designer then we have um one from Moldova, that is another like uh, painting designer, more like not 3D. Then um, we have one from, I don't know where he's from, <laughs> um, that is doing like uh, also a developer. And what we had, we have, yeah. It's have cool to... that, you know, there is a big team involved. That's, that's also yeah. um, great for like the industry that means you know there is energy flowing in i actually want to ask you this and um i saw this in the comments and um uh it let me find it again it is really really interesting so interoperability mr wright asked this question or you know made that comment interoperability could be a huge issue moving between games and you know what we see these days um uh, we see like the the weakest point of a blockchain is always like the, the bridges between different blockchains, right? So uh, we've seen many um, hacks going on the last uh, couple of months. And so interoperability is the future. Cross-chain, multi-chain activities is the future, yes. So what do you think is like right now the biggest challenge there? Um, or have you guys faced something like that? I know that you guys are focusing on XRPL right now and maybe only on XRPL, but maybe you had some discussions on that. Maybe, you know, just your thoughts on this would be interesting. Okay. Um, interoperability. interoperability. <laughs> um, yes. Um, we plan to uh, adopt also other games from other blockchains. I don't see the problem with that. For example, if you, give, if you have a game and you give out uh, EQ tokens, and what hinders you from giving out also like... BTC or ETH token. You just need a, like the recipient just need a wallet that can support both tokens. In this case, like for example, a ledger can receive Ethereum based tokens, BNB based tokens, can almost receive everything. So if you have uh, one like universal wallet for everything, you can receive everything or even so you can decide, okay, I want my AQ rewards in this wallet and I want my other rewards in this wallet. So um, 
I don't see any problem with uh, with cross chain um, play to earn games uh, combining onto different sectors ecosystems. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, I have a very hard question. So I also have something in mind what could be like the answer for it, but I want to hear it from you because you are like more into the developer side and you know more about the tech. So we, we talked about, uh, you, you said, for example, the royalty stuff. I think also that's one of the like the strongest selling points of using the NFT technology for games. And... Um, But there's also this point where a company, uh, as soon as there's like this NFT integration, for example, uh, he will sell a skin once and that, that skin will be sold a couple times. But from that, another transaction, he only gets a portion. But if that's not possible, maybe the second or the third person would buy it directly from the company himself, which gives him like 100% of that skin so that's one part so yeah with nfts you have like more transactions in general because you can sell the skin you didn't play for six months and then at least get some money back and buy something new that's cool but on the other side this means uh, as far as i see uh, less income for the or less revenue for the company itself so it's getting harder for the company to sell stuff and profit from it less so that's one point the second question maybe direct directly the follow-up question is like you you talked about like a games for example alpha strike was it like the blockchain version of something like a shooter game for example counter-strike so what happens if let's say counter-strike starts adopting nfts because then people would say like why should i play that blockchain games which was developed by a let's say smaller a smaller publisher or smaller company and not go and directly play the originals was. So does that mean that as soon the big companies start adopting the NFT technology, will there be no smaller companies doing this stuff? So are you guys getting killed by Blizzard when they bring World of Warcraft to NFT? So I don't I don't think like that, but that's a that's a huge question a lot of people have in mind. Okay. Um, first question. Um, I mean, yes, you would uh, you would still have the normal like um, NFTs uh, sales or like, cosmetic item sales. For example, um, NFTs normally are like uh, non fungible; they're like unique. In our case, they're not unique. Um, they are they're each their own token. Yes, but each of the like, we, for example, we have like a cosmetic set, and the, uh, that set consists of five thousand, or that could be fifty thousand, whatever. Uh, tokens and each token gives uh, that item in the game so companies can still sell their um, cosmetic items or play to earn or pay to win whatever they want to sell uh, normally the benefit what it brings is afterwards um, that they get a, a continuous revenue stream of from those royalties maybe it's not as high as the the first sale but they still have the first sale like a norm they normally would But so they get a continuous revenue out of it, which can help to support the servers, can help to support new updates, uh, DLCs, uh, new games. And for the second question, um, you have this is like the typical um, problem with big gaming development companies and indie games. Um, of course, if you have a big gaming com uh, gaming development company, Activision, Blizzard, whatever, if they create a game, everybody's going to play it. But then also you have like those indie game uh, development uh, companies. For example, you just recently had Re Rising. Uh, was I think was one guy, two guys, I don't know. Um, it suddenly exploded in popularity. Everybody was playing Minecraft. It. Minecraft. Like 10 years ago, one yeah. only person student doing it for university. Yeah. Yeah, you still have those games, and um, um, I think the the difficulty is okay. You can't compare directly with the quality, but uh, maybe it will take more time to compare with the qu quality of a big gaming development studio. But you can um, bring something that no other, for example, big gaming development companies they they're hesitant in trying new things. So we always see first like smaller, like Minecraft is like a Lego in uh, Lego game. 
if, if, uh, like a sandbox game. And now everybody is, okay, hey, this was a success. Now let's try it ourselves. So uh, indie game developers, they are more like pioneers in new uh, unexplored sectors. And it can be a huge success. Minecraft, um, Fortnite was not a big company before it. The developers, they were really small. Um, um, revising um, recently, for example. And yes, they have their, their chances. Um, it's not uh, easy, of course, to if Blizzard announces World of Warcraft 2, then all other MMOs, doesn't matter if you're a big company or a small one, then you're kind of, uh, nobody will really care about you for a year. <laughs> this is but, reality. Daniel, I actually want to take it from here because I want to tell you guys, I'm a huge, radical, fundamental believer that community is the most important thing. 3T Academy is all about community. And we've seen like literally we we have the strongest community out there. And uh, I'm not bragging, by the way. The reason why I'm telling that is doesn't matter if a big, big brand with million, billions of dollars coming to this market, if you can really win hearts, right? If you can win the hearts of the people and design something like um, a game that is fun and has crazy experiences for people, you know, you can gain experiences there. But um, it's just... A great environment for people to connect and the people love you if you can really manage that then obviously if blizzard you know takes a huge portion of that market share doesn't matter you you will have your tribe and this is literally web3 is all about tribes right it's about having like-minded people this on the same frequency playing this is why you know i am not really like concerned about like oh Will they suffer? No, I really believe if you stick to that, the fundamentals, nothing is going to happen. And I got this comment here, and this is so good. Community is king. This is absolutely true. And I actually want to uh, uh, switch to a, another topic, which is now the, the Mark Cuban article that I'm going to bring up. So he talked about Axie Infinity. He talked about Metaverse, etc. And it's just, you know, Daniel, the most important issue I see on Twitter everywhere for the last months, it's all about like, how can we achieve mass adoption for gaming and blockchain if the entry is not uh, attract like attractive? If gamers, I'm not a gamer, for example, I don't know much about gaming, uh, but if, you know, I, I know gamers and they're hardcore gamers, they love these, you know, Grand Theft Auto, for example, these kind of games. And like, how do you think can uh, projects um, attract these people? Because let's move on to this article, and I want to get your opinion on that. Literally, it's just, you know, this is it. This is literally it. Like, for example, Mark Cuban on Axie Infinity, and Bellino, you can take it from here as well. He said, um, you know, like many other projects do the same thing. Literally, when you want to join the game, you need to buy an NFT, and that's like $500, $600 to entry. And like an, someone who doesn't like the graphics, and we know most of these games have a very, uh, very old kind of graphics, right? So it's not, I know that you guys are work, you, you guys are working with Unreal Engine, but so many out there play to earn. It's like whenever tones bring them up, I'm like, I want to throw up. Like this is, what the hell? This is, I don't want to play that kind of game. This is for three-year-olds, right? But people do kind of like that. And um. It's just the entry is just $500, $600 sometimes for a game because you need to purchase an NFT first. So, um, Bellino, take it from here first. Explain to us this article. And then, Daniel, I want to know your thoughts on that. And that clocks, I know that you are you have some thoughts on this one as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, let's go with Bellino. Yeah, so basically, first of all, he gave he, he gives props to X Infinity because they were like kind of smart to kind of set up this in a in a bigger in a bigger constellation with like a good sponsorship and a lot of money fl flowing into the project to build it. And but the most interesting part of the pro of the this article of his statement is not where he's like giving props to them, but in my opinion, is like when you scroll down to the problem, you see that he's talking about 
like the actual problem he sees in in the games like X Infinity or X Infinity itself. So if you don't generate the revenues to buy the tokens, either you have to have new subsidies continually coming in, or you have to have new players coming to subsidize the, the existing players. So this for me sounds like he's talking about X Infinity, like it's a Ponzi scheme. So he's the, indirectly saying that. And uh, I mean, it makes sense because if you if everyone plays the game to get those NFTs and sell them and no one's going to buy enough NFTs, you have an inflation. And if you don't have enough buyers, you need buyers which buy more and you both of them are not like coming into the game. And that's also where he said like the minute the musical chair stop, it collapses. And that's like the biggest fear in like, joining this kind of games because you see this game is already played like let's say for one year and you feel like i could be the last one entering on the top and right after i enter the whole system could collapse and i would not even get out my investment there and we are not even talking about the time you have to put in to win those stuff so this is like a huge problem they need to address and he also has like a couple let's say solutions where he's talking about uh like using the huge player base to make advertisement on them and get bigger brands into that to like kind of cooperate with them and use this player base to like place advertisements and this is one way and then he says like you need you take one one quarter of whole the whole revenue you get in like for the normal payments and with the other part you are actually buying back those NFTs or those tokens to virtually create a cycle where people have like the feeling that is deflationary and not inflationary. And I would kick it over to you, Daniel, as a developer. Do you agree with Mark Cuban's uh, like problem and also the solution he did say there? I mean, he's like an entrepreneur. He's not on the developer side. But what do you think about this whole like problem and also the solution he did tell you um yes i mean there are two problems one problem is like currently in many play to earn games that the developers are not the, the real developers they are mostly just projects and they are there for their money they don't care about the games um for example i'm a gamer myself um i actually wanted to, to try out the game to see how it looks and then i saw that three, at that time it was like 300 dollars to buy one monster and it's like what the fuck? Like even the, the new games, they cost like even the high end, they cost $50 or 40, you know? Um, so it was like really like $300 just for more monster. And this kind of, uh, in the end, you just have a really small community of blockchain enthusiasts that, or that want to make money with it. Um, it's a similar story, like you said, Ponzi scheme, um, not directly Ponzi scheme, but I think it's like similar to all the node projects that were really famous the last months, like Fire, Strong, um, Stronger. Um, as long as you get in, uh, in at the correct time, it's good. It's worth the money because you get more out. But as soon as you are the last one or the last 10%, you are kind of, yeah. Um, so the difficulty is uh, to get gamers to play the game um, for the reason of the game, to, because they want to play the game. And yes, if you have like X Infinity, I don't want to talk bad about competitors, but you have like a big uh, hurdle just to get inside, um, which for gamers, normal gamers, is not attractive at all. The only people that really are going to play it are blockchain investors that think they can make a profit of, out of it. So they will not uh, attract the, the broader market. They will just attract a really small percentage of people. Um, to get back to the point, to Mark Cuban, um, yes, I kind of agree with him. Um, those type of games that are not uh, there for the gaming aspect, they are there for other reasons. Those ones, they will fail, most probably. Yeah. Hey, I want to bring attention to a comment that we got in here just because I think it's really important uh, to this show and the whole conversation. It comes from um, XRP AIM. He says, wow, Dead Clock's hair is so cool. You're right. It's pretty cool. But no, anyways, uh, thank you for that. 
Um, I think that I think that it, it's it's a really cool time in uh, in the play to earn um, industry because uh, people are all just trying to figure out the best way for it all to work. And the answer is is that so many of these ways work. So if you look over the last ten or fifteen years of games, uh, you've you've seen so many different models come in and and you know and take over the the gaming industry you know uh you know some of us older people you know we're used to to buying games you know and then the entire game being free uh and then you'd be buying you know expansions and additional content and then they kind of switch to more of a free to play uh model um i didn't understand that when it first came out i said who's gonna they're gonna make all their money off of cosmetics and stuff like that nobody's gonna do that everybody did it um you know so now there's there's a whole bunch of opportunities uh you know with the play to earn it's it, it has stoked a lot of interest and it, it seems pretty simple of a concept but it is very complex because of all the things we just talked about right you have to you have to really work out all the kinks of getting people to play the game for what it's designed to like it was just said versus the people that want to you know try to make a career off of it or, or make a ton of money and get rich off of it versus casuals i will say that i've played enough games to know that there will always be every every type of player so you're going to have uh, new players coming in that are willing to spend money to kind of get up to where they want to be um Nice day, clocks. Nice. Uh, you have things to use an NFT. <laughs> you have people that are just going to throw the bank at everything to have every sort of skin or gear or any purchasable thing that you can have to be the the best in the game. You're going to have the people that buy that. You're going to have the the grinders, the people that have spent twelve hours a game needlessly grinding the game and farming as much stuff as possible, whether it is to be the best in the game or to sell it. You're going to have every single type of these people in the economy, right? So it. It's, it's going to work itself out, uh, but you're right. At first, you probably will have a pretty big wave of people that just want to maximize, uh, you know, how much they can make off the game. And how I kind of see this panning out is that you're not just going to be able to pick up this game and start making a ton of money on it, right? You're going to have to either grind uh, yourself up to certain levels or, or get a certain type of gear or things or, or, or stuff or even maybe spend some money yourself. Uh, in order to get to the point where you're you're actually able to make more than pennies, you know, on the dollar by playing the game. So there's there's going to be there's going to be room for every uh, for every type of player and every type of situation. So hopefully, you know, we just kind of see a good balance uh, to where it succeeds. But I, I think that we will. So I think I can't wait to see. I like it. And uh, Jackie, want to know your thoughts? Um we had this comment earlier and it's really interesting. Like I want to know also D D Daniel's um, answer to that, which is, is Jackie's computer strong enough to play games? Right. So this is also a big concern. Like um, how is it going to work? Like um, will gaming projects, I'm asking because I'm just curious, like Daniel, um, the, there are many computer like games that I can't, use on my computer maybe because the system requirements are just you know too high so my question is um like for gaming blockchain games is it going to be more like do you think the uh, web browser games will be um easier for mass adoption than the games that you know the, the the big guys are playing right the real hardcore gamers are playing what do you think and like how do you want to solve this Uh, with your partner, is it going to be a game that I have to download and use my graphics card, or is it going to be a web browser kind of game? I think the the biggest adoption will get uh, phone games, mobile apps. Um, everybody has a phone right now. Um, I think most phones they will support most of the games. So I think if somebody comes up with like a Candy Crush uh, in a blockchain game, this will be really successful. Um, And in general, of course, they will not, the, they will not look the best. Um, I mean, if you want to have a, look, a good looking game, the more you need to invest into the hardware. Um, but besides that, I think mobile games, browser games, more or less, they're not that much in attraction anymore. I think mostly mobile games, they're right now um, 
the big attraction for people. Like a lot of times we get the question, hey, do you, uh, can I play this on mobile? And it's like, yes, if you put a 3090 into your, connect a 3090 to your phone, yes, of course, you can play it. Um, but Just for people <laughs> that don't know, 3090 is a big graphics card, guys. <laughs> big graphics card. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will later show also the game a bit, and oh say yeah, the, um, this will not directly work on any like the mob, mobile phones or phones in general. They're not strong enough uh, with the processing processing power to handle those effects. And yeah, yeah. Why don't you? I mean, Jackie, I uh, want to get your thoughts on this as well. Um, actually, there is a cool uh, article that I want to show, and Jackie want to have your opinions on that. So here it comes. Um, so Infinite Arcade to disrupt Web3 gaming with casual mobile games, right? Imagine you have Candy Crush, sir. That would be huge. Absolutely, I agree. But what I personally don't like is if I'm so new to this and I want to have that kind of introduction, and Jackie, maybe you too, I don't know. Um, Infinite Arcade is creating the most comprehensive catalog of Web3 casual games that anyone can play for profit on their devices after purchasing an, purchasing an NFT Players can play for free. <laughs> After purchasing the NFT, you can play for free or participate in the play and earn model. So, Jackie, like, let, let me ask you first, uh, and then we can also get, you know, Daniel's uh, opinion on that. So, would you actually try it out? Would you get an NFT without thinking that, oh, this is probably going to appreciate in price? No, like, just to play this game, would you buy the NFT if it, you know, costs 0 0.08 Ethereum? Um, or in dollar terms, let, let's say like a couple hundred dollars, would you do that? Or is it for you just a huge barrier? Oh, no, I'm gonna, I'm not going to make it. Um, actually, I tried this that exact scenario out um, with a play to earn game. Uh, initially, you had to buy the NFT. Uh, but me, since I'm not such a gamer and I did like how Dead Clocks kind of uh, position that there's so many different types of people who are getting into the gamer space, where whether they really, really enjoy the game, whether they're just looking to make a profit, things like that. I was one that was looking to make a profit. So my eyes were more on uh, the appreciation of the NFT as well as the added factors of being able to earn the in-game token, swap that out for fiat, you know? Um, so... That was mainly my my scenario, my viewpoint. Um, I, I think you, you definitely will have both, you know, that will buy the NFT um, and and try try the game out and see, you know, actually if they have an interest in the game. Um, but you will, especially this being a crypto market, a crypto currency space, um, a lot of people are just looking to make a profit. Um, and some people, like we discussed, some people kind of get um rugged on the back end if you're the last 10 percent to join um an nft game or an nft um yeah a play to earn game if you're the last 10 percent, you know you kind of get sucked in uh to be someone else's um exit uh so i mean that's that's the most typical situation that i'm seeing with a lot of play to earn games coming out right now they don't have an ecosystem that's sustainable because you have people that come in early their their appreciation because you have that double factor and it hasn't quite been solved yet because you have an appreciation of the nft as well um so when people get their roi um and, and sell off the people that come in at the back end um, are kind of screwed because they bought high um, and both when you buy high for the NFT price um, and that's that floor starts to drop you also the developers are trying to keep um, the ecosystem going with the in-game token but they're they're implementing new things such as burns um, things like that that now the rewards for the play to earn isn't as high as well. So you, you have people that are kind of stuck in the ecosystem um, continuing to play, but that's, that's the most um, that I've been seeing mostly within this space is that there has to continually be um, an ecosystem, but they're, they're constantly implementing new, new things into the game for it to not completely collapse on itself. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. 
Hey guys, like literally here in the chat, people are like, we got people that support mobile. We have people supporting contact lenses. What's going on in the chat, man? Thank you so much. And I love it. Um, so that clocks your turn, man. Um, I support, I support both. I've played a uh, competitively uh, mobile game um, and computer games. So I really do support both. Uh, but as far as the other topic, um, <clears throat> You know, having having to buy an NFT, I think is going to be uh, kind of detrimental. So it's going to be like uh, going back to the the pay for the game before you play it, right? Uh, so you, instead of paying a game, for, you know, sixty bucks for a game, now you might be spending upwards of several hundred dollars for an NFT. Um, you know, I go back to one of my very first statements where I said I'm just kind of waiting to see, uh, you know, what's going to be the game before I really, you know, uh, dive into one. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of people aren't going to be jumping into a whole bunch of games if they're having to throw three, four, five, six, seven hundred bucks, you know, just to, to really get into the game to see if it's going to work. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of people on the sidelines just waiting for, you know, some sort of proof, some sort of, you know, whatever. So I, I really think that uh, finding a way around that uh, for your game to still work would probably be beneficial if you want the masses to come. Um, as far as, you know, it being like some of the other things in the, in the web three space where you're going to have to have a, con, uh, continual you know, influx of new players to support the, the people that are selling out. I don't think that's going to be as much of an issue as people think that it's going to be if the game's good, right? Like people want a game where they can know life, where they can play and grind. And, and I think that once, uh, kind of some of these systems are up, they'll be pretty self-sustaining, but it's, it's been like this in every game for the history of gaming. Once the game stops putting out new content, uh, you can look at it, whatever your favorite game is over the years. Once, you know, additional content starts, stops being added and updates and stuff like that, the game, you know, dies out anyways, because, you know, most people that have beaten the game or, 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 or maxed out the content isn't getting anything new. Right. So that's never, that's, that's always been a thing in games. Uh, you know, so, that's that's still going to continue to be a thing and it's probably always going to be a thing in game right so you can't really use that as a deciding factor because that just really goes down to doing your research and getting into a game with a really strong you know team and background that you know they're not gonna lose interest in the game but you can say that in everything you could say that in the nft space you know once a project launches their nfts you can tell if a team's lost interest or if they're still pelled to the floor trying to make themselves better you know you can tell who's working who's working when times are up who's wor who working when times are down and who's coming out with quality products and that's you know I, I know we kind of wrap it around to this every week but that's really comes back to finding the right community and the right games and the right things to invest your time and your money to buy nfts in because if you're just out there throwing money at a wall and hoping that something sticks you're going to have 12 different nfts that you bought for 500 dollars each and maybe none of them are going to work right so as this space kind of heats up and you start seeing uh more and more companies come out with more and more games just like in the nft space you're going to have everybody talking oh god look check out this this is the best thing this is the next thing since sliced bread and you're going to get a big wave of that Right. So that's why it's so important right now, kind of when the markets are wrecked and people are down, see what companies are working. You know, uh, obviously, Equilibrium Games has four people right here on stream in their office. They still have their horse pop blinders on. They're trying to come out with a, a good product. All right. I'll take that any day over an ad that says, hey, this is the best way that you can make money. All you have to do is buy this first and, and trust us. Right. So. Uh, again, just just look for the people that are doing work and 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 looking out for the community and building a community and and follow their development. That's going to be the best way to go. That's my advice. Yes. Also regarding uh, cost of playing any games, it's always a fine line. For example, you have uh, NFT games, and often the cost of those NFTs is way too high for any games. For example, you have like a game and then you have like a cosmetic skin and they value it at $1,000. And it's like, nobody's going to play it. To play it. Um, so for example, for our, our game, we already adopted the, not the typical free-to-play model, uh, free model. So our game is, will be, is, will be free to play. Um, we have uh, cosmetic items which are uh, oriented at normal gaming prices. Like if you go to Fortnite and you want to buy a skin, um, that similar price will be for our cosmetic items. So I think um, gaming companies, they need to have a fine line between uh, pay to win, uh, 
play to earn and the general cost for their games. And um, Daniel, now we talked a lot about like gaming, the challenges, all of that, but you know, all these projects out there that are talking about like, hey, we're using Unreal Engine, but like, can you show us a little bit of like, what is Unreal Engine uh, looking like in Equilibrium games? So maybe a little sneak peek would be awesome. I, I think you're dead. Nice. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> Maybe you want to turn on your mic. No, the, now the stream is way, way. Yep, yep. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, sir. Now yes. we can hear you. Okay. So um, let me equip first some items. This is our first level. Um, the game name is Blight's Ras. It's like an epic style game. Uh, Diablo 2 style uh, loot system. You have here fantasy creatures right now in the first uh, level. They are skeletons. And kind of reminds me of Skyrim. Gothic. Kind of reminds me of Tones. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the graphics are really good, though. Like, so this is. Um, this is a question. Is this Unreal Engine 4 or yes, 5? Yes, this is still Unreal Engine 4. Uh, Unreal Engine 5 has some benefits. For example, um, the lightning system. Uh, in Unreal 4, you need to kind of fake the, the lightning, uh, the illumination, where Unreal 5 has like this automatically inside. Um, it can support, Unreal Engine 5 can like support higher uh, quality textures. For example, here you see like if you sp scroll in a bit, you see that there's, um, let me first kill this one with my admin spell. Um, that if you scroll in a bit, that is a bit um, not too detailed. Um, but besides that, of course, it's uh, on the standard of most uh, games. So um, right now, of course, you guys use Unreal Engine 4. And is there like... Um, any challenges with Unreal Engine 5, like connecting that to a blockchain, et cetera? Like, is that still too early? Um, or do you think that's going to happen very, very soon? Um, the problem with Unreal Engine 5 is that it's still in development. So there are a lot of, um, um, how do you say it, um, plugins that are not working yet, that are still in development, a lot of bugs um, that happens. Um, that needs time to develop. Um, for example, the Matrix demo that everybody saw, uh, it ran with uh, 60 FPS. And uh, in for smaller teams, this is like a big challenge. If like a like a demo already is the maximum is 60 FPS, then um, it's kind of hard for developers to make like a smooth running game. Uh, for example, what I can show here. Um, these are our cosmetic items, for example. This is the Sunrise Armor set. And this one is like cosmetic item. It's like a, doesn't have any uh, in-game benefit, but it overlays the, the normal item. For example, if I take it out, you have uh, the normal helmet on top of it. So these are the free ones, but if I want, I can buy skins as well and this these are nfts and they're going to be on xrpl right on the blockchain yes exactly like those are our normal uh, in-game items and then if you want to have like um special uh, for example this one like a cool looking set that uh, is animated that uh, skeletons and a final question i want to ask let's say you develop another game or there is another project that uh, develops a game on XRPL and uses Unreal Engine, let's say Unreal Engine 4 now. Um, is it going to be possible? I mean, if everything's like, let's say XLS20 is out, is there going to be a way uh, to take that 3D asset from that game and bring it to uh, this game? Is that is you know something that you guys are going to work on? Um, yes. In general, like if the gaming engine is the, um, supporting um, 3D items. For example, if the game itself is uh, 3D, 
for example, in Unity, um, you, you can um, transfer um, different uh, 3D models uh, easily to other games. So what we do, for example, with our partners, um, we say, okay, hey, this armor, for example, can be also like in the um, in this game of our partner. So if you buy this NFT, you will also get um, uh, this cosmetic item set uh, in in uh, XR, XR Ronin, for example, which is also developing on the Unreal Engine 4. Fantastic. Daniel, when uh, when should the viewers here uh, be expecting to be able to play uh, this game? Um, we plan to go live uh, with the beta later this year, um, around December probably. Fantastic. That's exciting. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, of the, of the few uh, you know games that I've looked into, this one looks by far uh some of the, the the best put together. I'm definitely uh, going to be looking a lot more into your into your company. So um, we do have to wrap it up, guys. Um, Daniel, let's get a last some last words from you. Uh, where can people find out more information about your project, uh, and, and where can they kind of join your community so they can be up to date on on things related to your game? Yes, um, we mostly share our updates on uh, Twitter. Uh, we have our Equilibrium uh, underscore G uh, Tech. Um, we are pretty active in Telegram. Um, if you have any questions, just join our Telegram link. You can find it in Twitter and different spaces on our website, um, equilibrium uh, slash games.com. Um, we have also a Discord where you can ask questions and uh, also a Facebook account, actually. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for being our guest. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Let's get one sentence last word from our crew here. Selman, shooting it over to you. Uh, what's your final your final sentence? Yeah, thank you, first of all, Daniel, and also our audience with the lovely comments. Uh, check out the links in the description. You can find Equilibrium Games and their website. Of course, don't go to a scammy page. All official links are in the description below. And of course, if you want to join our Discord, collect the everything's down here. And the Academy, of course, uh, fresh as it always is. Every link is out there. Thank you so much, Daniel. I think we uh, discussed a very important topic and saw a little bit of you know the insides of the challenges and uh, where we're at right now. And uh, during these times so thank you so much I'll longest one on sentence ever Bellino, let's go to you one sentence close us out thank you for every everyone for showing up and i will invite you to our fall guys community game tomorrow on our discord server don't miss it out it's for free and uh yeah daniel you're also invited if you want to play with us you come on all right jackie we're going to you apparently you have three sentences let's hear it <laughs> i love y'all that was one that was two. Aww. That was three. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thank you guys for coming out and watching. Uh, again, my name is Dead Clocks. Uh, join Daniel's community. Uh, obviously, you can also join the 3T community and Collecti's uh, Discord. All the links will be provided, and we'll see you guys next week.